Hey everyone, I've got a question for you. Did you still enjoy a movie even though you can't remember a single damn thing about it? That's how I feel about the first movie, Smile. I remember liking it. I just don't remember a goddamn thing about the film. I cannot recall a single thing other than the Aussie actress in it with her crazy smile. So now I'm wondering, I'm making this video so that I can remember what Smile 2 about is about when the inevitable Smile 3 comes out in a year or so's time. Hi everyone, I am the Artie Dance. Welcome to Shock Mania. Welcome to this review of the movie Smile 2. What's it about? Well, it's about a pop actress who is doing a comeback tour after spending a year off in rehab for drug abuse and after the brutal death of her boyfriend in a car accident. And on her on the eve of her uh, first concert, all this weird stuff starts happening. Of course, the smiling people start appear and she goes crazy. And well, I think you can understand how the movie ends here. The biggest thing that they've done with they being Paramount have done with Smile 2 is they've started to give the smile a story. And so now we understand that it is some kind of demonic parasite that can invade the host and is looking for something in the host before it moves on. Hasn't quite explained what that something is yet. And this is where Paramount has now turned Smile into a franchise because you can just see part three will now expand upon this law and probably explain that the movie was, you know, that the, the parasite was first discovered in 1600s rural America, thanks to some witchcraftery. And you know, that'll be Smile 3. So they'll create an origin story for it. And Smile 4 will then probably set the movie in the past where the, the first smile ever occurred and, and how the very primitive cavemen tried to stop the smile. And Smile 5 will only be understood because a producer's cut will come out after there's a lot of conflict on set and you know no one actually has a clue what the movie was out. Part 6 will most likely be a spin-off called Frown. Smile 6, Frown. Uh, you know, it'll be like the alter ego of the parasite. And then of course Smile 7 will come out and that'll be a reboot of Smile 1 and 2 put together. You can just see this happening. You know how this roadmap's going to happen. Paramount and Hollywood are nothing if not utterly predictable in what they're about to do with this franchise. It doesn't mean that it's all bad and all doom and gloom though. The movie, this movie in particular, what I really liked about it was the music, the sound design. Um, and, and that's what you get from glitzy Hollywood productions. You get the best of the best. And in this case, the sound design is is second to none. There are a couple of jump scares, which, uh, you know, for those sensitive to it, I can hear the screaming already in the cinema for the jump scares. Uh, but it's it's more that, that off-tempo, off-tune music that appears throughout the movie. That It's very unsettling. It's, it's definitely done to the highest professional level that it can. The flip side of that is what you get is CGI. CGI blood, CGI effects, CGI that really takes you out of, of certain scenes. So for example, towards the end when the smile manifests itself as some kind of four-legged being, uh, you know, it's just, it looks like a boss from a PlayStation 3 video game. You know, it's, it's, it's that level of CGI and creativity when it comes to it. Um, so overall, I think Smile 2, it, look, it was a fun film. It's it's probably too long. And it's the same issue that I had with Terrifier 2 and 3, I haven't seen part one, but 2 and 3, is that anything over two hours is just way too long for a horror movie. Sorry, I'm a horror fan, but I really don't want to spend two hours watching a horror film. And Smile 2 does overstay its welcome by a, a pretty decent 20 minutes, I would say. There's, there's, there's probably some savings to be had and an hour 45 would have really been a great way to end it. Um, I actually do want to talk about bad decisions in horror movies. And uh, I'm actually impressed for once that the main character didn't make too many bad decisions. That, so I think back to Speak No Evil, 
where the main characters have a chance of going out the front door and escaping yet they decide to go up the stairs and jump off the roof that's that's a dumb decision and that could have easily have been avoided in this movie i think the dumbest decision that our main character makes is by going to meet a complete stranger in a seedy bar uh, dressed in nothing but a hoodie and thinking that no one would notice her and that's a bad decision but it's not you know jumping off the roof kind of bad decisions uh, so um, I do like that the fact that they've given her this kind of backstory of a recovering drug addict because what it means is no one will take her seriously. Oh, you're seeing uh, you're seeing demons and ghosts and spirits. Oh, you must be drugged up again. You must be suffering from some kind of delusion or hallucination brought on by by your drug use. You know, th th it takes the believability out of her story. Otherwise, it's very by the numbers. It's very Hollywood horror which means that it looks good, it sounds good, but there's really no heart in it, you know? And as much as I could say that I didn't like Terrifier, it has heart. It has a lot of heart. So using my patent pending ghost rating, which stands for great horror or stupid trash, the fact that it is, it is so well produced and so glitzy and still a rather great film means that I'll give this a three ghosts and and it might be a smidgen high for some of you who might be thinking well you gave Terrifier three two ghosts and you're giving this three it's probably because I I did enjoy this one a little bit more than than Terrifier there was probably more to get into with this film but certainly has its flaws thus you know being Hollywood is its biggest flaw and it wears that proudly on its sleeve but what did you think of it I'm guessing by now that you've seen Smile 2 what do you think of it compared to Smile 1? And like I said, I can barely remember anything about Smile 1. And hopefully when Smile 3 comes out, I can watch this video back and go, ah, that's what it was about. Nah, now I remember. Anyway, as always, what do you think? I am the Artie Dance and you are watching Shock Mania. Thank you for tuning in. Leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of Smile 2. Otherwise, I will catch you next time.